So mama, why pranayama? Why now? Right now, everything is upended. Every day we wake up and we face monotony in lockdown, but we also face a giant unknown. Like we grab our phones, we want to know, tell me some news, tell me it's over, tell me it's better, give me some hope. This is a, a time of chaos. And fascinatingly, the Chinese letter or figure or pictograph for chaos and opportunity is exactly the same one. So this is an opportunity right now for us to commit to a pranayama practice. We do our asana practice. We know, we know its value. We sometimes do our breathing, maybe not too regularly. We've told ourselves, we've made New Year's resolutions that we should go to the next limb in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra from asana number three to pranayama number four. But we don't often stick with it in the same way. And this is the opportunity to do that because we take you through this process step by step. We talk about the anatomy of the diaphragm. We talk about the different kinds of breath. We talk about energy aspects of breathing, when to do it, how to do it, and what asanas might help you do it better and why. So you know how to set up this pranayama practice. You've been training for this time in our lives all, all your yoga life. You've been training to, to tune inward. You've been training to go to the mat. It's gotten you through many hard, hard times in your life and many good times, which are very exciting and brought you back to earth. And we are now the yogis and yoginis who are, are in the cave of spiritual practice. We may be, did not choose it for this moment, but we have the opportunity in this chaos to go in our cave, to go in the forest, be the forest dweller, wrap ourselves in practice for five or 10 minutes every day with this pranayama practice. And finally, this is an emotional time. It's hashtag everything is canceled time. And everyone we know is on a new schedule, but the same schedule we don't know from minute to minute. And the breath is a powerful, uh, has a powerful relationship with emotions. When we have emo emotions change our breath, we go ah! and hold it with happiness or excitement or, or when something new happens. When we cry, we change our breath. When we're angry, we change our breath. So breath and emotions are in an intimate dance. And one of the things that pranayama does is it, it, it quiets that relationship. It quiets that relationship. I think you have found that as we've worked together on this course that five or 10 minutes of pranayama changes your emotive state. Yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing is that the breath and the mind go together. When, when we change our breathing, we change our brain, literally our brain waves. Everyone knows that. You've heard from your mother when you were growing up, your grandmothers, just sit down and take a deep breath, calm down. Um, so we know that breathing changes the mind. And these, this sense of being at ease in the in the body is critical. We tend to look for ease in location. Like I can be at ease on retreat or I can be at ease on my yoga mat. But what pranayama really does is it spreads out that ability to be at ease in the location of your body. This location is not you are now in Salzburg, I'm in San Francisco. The true location of our lives is our inner being. And this course offers us the chance in a, in a straightforward, 
simple but hopefully profound way and process to integrate, to weave in the practice of pranayama into our, into our lives at this moment when, it, when our presence and our wisdom is greatly needed for our families, friends, and the world. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. I do hope that you all will join us. We're starting the course on April 20th. All of us together will be moving through the five weeks, building a home practice all around the world. And there'll be three live calls with Mama. So we will feel the sense of our global community and our strength together as we embark on this practice. So we'll see you there. Heart to heart. Namaste. Namaste.